Is your printer too small for the 3D parts you want to print? That's not a problem. I'll show you the cut settings that you need, different connectors you can add, and tips so you don't make the same mistake that I did. Hey everyone, welcome to 3D Max Builds. This clone trooper helmet was too big for my printer, so I had to cut it down into four pieces. In this video, I'll show you the settings I used, plus the different connector options needed to hold it in place while you weld or glue it back together. Plus, these settings can be used on multiple different slicers. Let's get started. When you're printing a model that's too big for your printer like this clone trooper helmet, your slicer will show you what areas will not fit the print volume with these darker areas here. To print this, you'll need to cut it into smaller parts. On the top toolbar, there is the cut tool. Once you select it, you can move the cut plane and also rotate it on the X, Y, and Z axes. There are also different options on connecting the parts. I want to look at those options before cutting this helmet, so I need the perfect test file. So I made a rectangle, or whatever a 3D rectangle is called. There are two cut modes, planar and dovetail. Let's try dovetail first. The rotation on the cut plane is good, so I just needed to decide where to place the cut. You can change the size of the dovetail with the depth and width sliders. You can also change the flap angle here. It doesn't make sense to go over 90 degrees because it will not lock in place. So I'll just leave it at 60 degrees. You can also change the groove angle. I'll leave that at zero for this cut. And you can adjust the tolerance on the depth and width. You may want to increase or decrease this number depending on your printer or print quality. A higher quality print can have a smaller tolerance. For this test, I'll leave it at the default 0.1 millimeter. Now I click on perform cut and I'll move the second part back on the build plate. I'll do a second cut to test out the groove angle. Let's set this at 15 degrees. Click on perform cut, then move the part back on the build plate. I want to flip the two parts to have the flattest side on the plate. I will also add supports for the bottom here. Now I'll slice and print. First I'll check the dovetail with the 0% groove angle. It's a nice tight fit. But you can see here how it still slides from side to side, so you'll still need to make sure the parts are set in place. And now the 15% groove angle. Because of the angle, it stops when they're lined up, which is nice, but the parts do not stay together. So if you use the dovetail connection, I recommend using the 0% groove angle because it does hold better. Let's look at the next option. For the next test, I'll change the mode to planar. Again, you can place the cut where you want it, but now you need to click on add connectors. There are three types to choose from, plug, dowel, or snap. With the plug connector, there are two styles, prism or frustum. There are also a few shapes to choose from. I'll start with the circle. You can change the depth and width with the slider. Well, at least when you have the piece selected. It does give you a warning if you make the size too large for the area. Let's go with four millimeters for the size and depth. Just to mix it up, I'll add a triangle as a second plug and a square as the third. Also, you need to make sure that these are centered on the part. You don't want them too close to the edge. If you rotate the view, you can see the other part and it shows you where the connectors are. And same thing here is the dovetail. You can adjust the tolerance with the sliders. Now click to confirm the connectors and click on perform cut. I'll do a second cut using the frustum style. I'm doing a few different shapes again and I need to make sure they're centered. Then confirm and perform the cut. Let's move this over, then slice and print. Let's connect the prism style. It locks in place and you don't need to worry about it moving in any direction. And now the frustum style. These don't hold at all. If you end up using the plugs, you definitely want to go with the prism style. They hold the parts in place, which makes it a lot easier when you're trying to glue or weld the parts together. On this test, I'll go with planar again and choose dowels. This time I'll just go with the circles. I'll place a couple on the part and increase the size to four millimeters. And I want to make sure that they're centered. There's not as many options here, so I don't need to test anything with a second cut. I leave the cut position down the middle. Then I confirm and perform the cut. Then slice and print. Let's get these together by first inserting the dowels, then fit the parts together. These don't hold together as well as the plugs, but it's not bad. But there is an advantage to using the dowels. If you go with plugs and they end up breaking, you lose that connection. But with the dowels, you can easily print more if they're lost or broken. And the last type to try is snap. There are no choices this time for style and shape. There are some new options here for bulge and gap. I'll place a couple on the part. Then I'll increase the size to 4 millimeters. 
and make sure they're centered. For the new settings, increasing the bulge increases the angle that will lock the connector in place. An increase in the gap allows more space in between. For this cut, I'll put the bulge at 15% and the gap at 30%. Then I can firm the connectors, perform the cut, place on the plate, then slice and print. Let's put these together. These don't snap in place very easily. Okay, there's the first one. And there's the second. Well, that didn't work. Let's try something else. I will try another test and change the bulge to 5% and the gap to 20%. I confirm, and then I'll place the cut up here. I'll do a second cut and increase the tolerance to 15%. Let's see if either of these settings will work. I slice and print. First, the 5% bulge with the 10% tolerance. Nope. Now the 15% tolerance. Let's compare the four different connections. First, the dovetail. You really don't need to mess with the settings, just place the cup plane where you want it. When you put the parts together, it can move side to side, and you can only place one connection per cup plane. If you use this option, make sure you use a 0% groove angle. For the plug, I think these held the parts in place better than all the other options. Although if any of those plugs break, you're stuck with a broken part. If you go with this option, make sure you use Prism. For the dowel, the main parts won't break, you can just replace the dowels if you need to. With these, there are more parts you have to fit together, and it doesn't hold quite as well as the plug does. If you go with these, just make sure you print extra dowels. And for the snap, you do get that satisfying click sound when they're locked in place. But that sound is just your parts breaking. If you go with this option, just make sure you have plenty of tape to hold the parts together when you're trying to glue or weld them in place. Now back to the Clone Trooper helmet. First, I need to decide where to place the first cut. I want to start by cutting off the top. The cut plane needs to be placed lower than the darker area that does not fit in the build volume. I try to find a spot that doesn't have as much detail. It'll be easier to apply Bondo over the seams where the surfaces are flatter. I'm going to use the plug connectors for this cut. I place four connectors on areas that are a little thicker and try to space them evenly apart. I confirm the connectors and perform the cut. Now I need to put the top on another build plate. On the top toolbox, the second icon is Add Plate. I add the plate and place the part on top. For the second cut, I want to find another area that has less detail, and I would rather not split it in the front. So I'll move the cut to right here. For these side cuts, I will use dowels. I'd rather not have them sticking out horizontally and needing supports. Then they might not fit in the holes as well. Before performing this cut, I think it's a good time to mention the choices after the cut. Object A is the front part here in cyan, and Object B is back here and in purple. You can choose to keep the rotation of the object as it is by choosing Keep Orientation. You can also place the cut side flat on the plate, which is what I did for the top. After the cut, you can always rotate the objects again if you're not happy with the angle. And Flip will flip it upside down. And Cut to Parts will make the cut, but it'll keep it as one object and not separate it. That can be used for when you're trying to paint an object in different colors, but it's not needed here. It's also grayed out because I already added connectors to this cut. Now the last cut. I move it over to the side to avoid the more detailed area. I use the dowels again. I add another plate and put it in place. On the left under process, you can change it from global to objects. Then you can select what plate you want to print. Now I have four different prints ready to go. I slice and print each of the four parts. Now let's put these together. I add the dowels to all the side cuts, put all the side parts together, then line up the lid with the plugs and put it in place. The parts are holding together well, so they'll stay in place when I connect them permanently. Although I did notice a problem with the connectors. They are showing through the sides of the helmet. Here's what happened. On the first cut, I moved the plane from the center towards the front of the helmet. I used the dowel on this cut, but it'll be easier to show you the issue with the plug. The problem is the cut plane is not perpendicular to the part, so the connector comes out at a different angle. Then it cuts through the side of the part. Here's what I should have done. Instead of moving the cut plane from the center, I should have rotated it. If I place the cut here, then the cut plane is perpendicular. Now it doesn't come through the side of the helmet. Then I can cut each of those pieces into two to make four parts instead of the three that I did. 
Even though I had this problem, the parts still held in place, so I was able to weld them all together very easily. And after I'm done, I have one solid helmet. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you in your next 3D print. If you want to see more videos like it, please like and subscribe and check this out next. Thank you for watching.